Hi, in this video, we are going to learn about the new activity package that has been released under IT automation, uh, which is the Google Cloud activities. So to begin with, uh, we will first see how you can get the Google Cloud activities. And for that, you have to go to the manage packages, uh, go to the official feed. And in here, you can search for Google Cloud and you will get this package uh, right in the official feed itself. Click install and click on save and your activity set will be installed and will be available for you to use. So now that the installation has completed, you will see the uh, activity set under uh, cloud and uh, under cloud, you will have this Google activity package. Uh, under this namespace, you have uh, two kind of activities. One is around the compute engine, wherein we have the uh, activities to uh, take action on the instances, uh, like creating the instance, deleting the instance, uh, creating instance from a template or running some kind of script on the instance. Uh, we can have all those things done by simply dragging and dropping uh, these activities. The second set of activities is around the storage. And within storage, you can uh, look at both the buckets and the objects. Buckets are uh, like containers within the Google Cloud, and you can use these activities to create, delete, and uh, basically play around with the buckets. And similarly, we have objects. Objects are the files and the folders that are contained within the buckets. And uh, if you want to do some activities around that, you can use these activities uh, to achieve the functionality. We are going to look at both of these uh, uh, set of activities by following some use cases in a bit, but uh, uh, there is another activity, one of the important ones that I wanted to bring your attention to, that is Google Cloud Scope. And uh, Google Cloud Scope is uh, the activity set uh, that will help you in connecting to your Google Cloud instance. So now uh, let's begin uh, by exploring the uh, instances set of activities which we have under Google Cloud and uh, to explore this we are going to uh, we are going to build a use case that will help in uh, performing some kind of virtual machine management so we are going to begin with uh, by creating the instances and uh, for creating the instances i have this workflow file uh, that is there for me and we are going to start by connecting it to the Google Cloud instance that we have. And for that, I'll just uh, simply drag and drop Google Cloud Scope activity within my uh, workflow file. Now the Google Cloud Scope activity uh, connects to your uh, Google Cloud instance by, uh, by using service account keys. And these can be provided in uh, two forms either the service account key directly, or you can uh, simply point out to the file, the service account key file that gets generated once you um, actually go ahead and create a service account key file. So how do you get this particular account file? You can simply go to your uh, Google Cloud instance uh, in the IM, uh, uh, IM management. Within that, you will get uh, an option of uh, service accounts, once you click on it, you can uh, have the service account uh, opened. Within that, you can go to the tabs uh, called keys, wherein you can add a new key. And uh, once you create a new key, you will get the file created. So that's how you will uh, get the JSON uh, file created, uh, which I already have uh, created for myself. And it is stored within this particular uh, project itself. This is the uh, a JSON file, and this is what uh, I'm pointing out to the, to this particular argument that I have service account key file. So to start with, I'll say that I'm going to use a service account key that is uh, available in my file, the one that was downloaded from my Google Cloud instance, and I will uh, point out to the exact location by attaching it to the uh, correct uh, variable. Now that uh, the Google Cloud Scope is ready and it, it can talk to our instance, let's go ahead and start creating uh, the instance uh, themselves. Uh, for that, first of all, we are going to create a data table, uh, which is basically going to help us in recognizing uh, the resources that I have. So it is going to have a couple of things. First of all, the creator. 
uh, which is going to be your name. The second label is going to be always on label, which uh, when is set to true means that the robots will not be able to switch off these machines, while uh, when always on is set to false, which will mean that the robots, whenever they run, they can look for these kind of uh, VMs and they, those VMs can be stopped. Basically, these VMs will be temporary VMs that has been spawned by the, uh, by the robots. And uh, I'm going to actually uh, associate it to uh, a variable called DT labels that I've created right now. And uh, after this, I'm going to use a create instance to actually go ahead and create the instance. And in here, there are some interesting properties uh, that we are going to walk through. First of all, there are startup key, uh, startup script key and startup script parameters wherein you can mention the script that you want to run when this uh, when the system spawns and you can also mention what are the what is that kind of uh, system that is there what is the kind of uh, script that is there that you want to run then you have the option of auto deleting the disk uh, if you check this mark which means uh, that whenever you when, whenever the instance that you have created like uh, in here is deleted the associated disk will also be uh, deleted and the next thing that you see in here is uh, the size in GB which you can mention here as 20 GB you have option of uh, choosing the disk type whether standard balanced or SSD and then you have the option of using the uh, source image as well which I've already uh, kept saved in one of my variables and uh, you can see that in here This is the source image. And then uh, you have also other options of uh, spawning this VMs. I'm doing it from image. You can uh, restore from a snapshot or uh, load it from a disk. Uh, the next thing that is of interest to us is obviously the labels that we have created. We are going to associate the labels in here. Uh, we are going to choose the machine type that is preferred to us. We will keep it really small. So we are good with micro. You have to give the name of the um, uh, system that 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 is getting created. For that, uh, we have this. So I'm using an instant name prefix to recognize whatever resources are there for me just by looking at the name, and then uh, providing a unique ID. Uh, Next is the project ID. Project ID is basically the project wherein you want this resource to be created. I have the project ID uh, saved in my arguments. I can mention it here directly. And uh, you can specify the timeout for this activity to run. Uh, uh, if not, it will wait until the completion. And then there is this interesting uh, parameter called wait for completion. Uh, if this particular parameter is checkmarked, where is this is set to true will mean that uh, until as the instance is created the activity will uh, wait for it if not it will simply mean that the creation of the uh, instance the the command for creating or creating the instance has already gone and the robot can move ahead so for now i'll keep it unchecked I don't want to uh, wait uh, till the end of it. Next is specifying the zone. I have the zone saved as well in one of the variables in here. It is going to be US Central. And then um, that's pretty much it. Uh, this should be able to create my instance. And the next thing that I want to do is I will create the copy of this. And I'll simply change the always on value to true so that I have one uh, temporary VM spawned up and one permanent VM that is getting spawned. Right, uh, rest of the things is going to be the same. Just the label uh, changes in here. So let's say if we are able to uh, spawn the uh, VMs now. I'll run this. Permission for the first VM went off and permission for the second VM went off. So if I go to my engines and go back to 
PMs. I should be able to see the two VMs that has been spawned uh, with the kind of naming convention that I provided. It is on the same zone. Right, so these two VMs are uh, running. If I go inside the detail of these VMs and if I see the labels, I have the always on false for one of the VMs. And for the second one, The second one, uh, the label is always on set to true. Now let's go ahead and uh, create another um, workflow, which will help us in managing these VMs, which means whenever these, uh, these workflows will run, it will basically help us in identifying the right kind of VM and stopping it. So we will start by doing the same process. First of all, I'm going to use Google Cloud Scope to uh, actually get attached to the right instance. I'll use service key account from file. I have it uh, in my arguments, so I'll connect to it. Now it will uh, be able to establish the connections. The second thing that I would like to do is I'm going to use uh, an activity called uh, for each instance. What it does is it basically helps you in filtering out the instance uh, when you provide uh, the right kind of filters. Uh, for me, I'm going to um, show you what kind of filter is going to be there for me. So in here, if I go to the filters, this is the filter that I'm going to use. There is a label for always on. This should be false. And the label, uh, within the label, if the creator is above Shankar, that is me. And the status is running. If all these three conditions meets, only then the instances will be selected. And the action uh, is going to be taken on them. So I'm going to uh, set this. I have to provide the project ID and the zone. So I'll provide that as well. Uh, it's going to be the same as before, these uh, values. And once I set this, um, I can actually play around with this instance. The first thing that I'm going to do is let me log the information, which instance is going to be stopped. So I will log this as in instance then i'll give you instance dot name is going to be stopped and then i'm going to actually stop the instance and for that i'm going to refer to another activity within the instances called stop instances I'll just simply drag and drop it in here. And I have to provide the instance that is going to be stopped, which is uh, pretty easy. And then I uh, have the option of waiting for the instances uh, instance to be stopped and then proceed with the next one. But right now I'll keep it unchecked so that uh, we can see the result uh, a lot quicker. So let's see if this runs. And it's done. So if I go back to my instances, I should see one of the instances stopped. Uh, this is the instance that is being stopped at the moment. Uh, you can see it here. Uh, this is uh, still being processed because I did not wait for the completion. The uh, instruction went off and the robot ended uh, its job. And the always on instance is still on, even though those were also being filtered out within the um, with the robot. So that's how you do uh, VM management using Google Cloud uh, activities that has been released by IT Automation. Uh, thank you for watching.